Hello, welcome to this West London Sport QPR podcast. As always, I'm joined by Ian McCullough and Kevin Gallant. Uh, so season's officially over. Um, QPR finished 11th in the championship. Mark Warburton's final game in charge ended with a 1-0 win in uh, against Swansea at Swansea. Um, well, I want to start by talking about an announcement that was made, obviously, before the game about the players who were going to be let go and who weren't going to be there next year. Um, so six players obviously leaving. I mean, one kind of stands out. Um, among the rest, obviously, a bit like being Charlie Austin, but we've also got Don Ball, Dylan Barnes, David Marshall, uh, Lee Wallace, and Kieran Westwood, who aren't going to be there next year. I mean, when you hear those names, Kev, is that is anyone like sort of surprise? Or maybe not surprise you, but is anyone you feel, kind of think the wrong call there, or do you think that will make sense to let those guys go? Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's quite sensible. If yeah, I wouldn't, I couldn't disagree with that really. Uh, I was. You know, having a little discussion with fellow supporters about Don Ball as a sort of a, uh, a squad player, but he hasn't played enough this season. And I know he can play in a few positions at the back and midfield. That could have been something maybe just keep him for a year. Uh, but if you want to move on and try and get better and try and progress, then maybe this is the right decision. Um, but the rest, I think I, I sort of agree on. Lee Wallace has done well, but, you know, age and if you're playing wing backs, it's not really... It's injuries, it's not, isn't it? It's, it's not really so many injuries. Game. And injuries hasn't helped him, but when he has played, I thought he's done well. Good character when he was on the pitch. Obviously, Charlie was... Um, it's a difficult one for the, for the, um, the board or the people, um, but also for the fans because he's such a fan favourite. But he hasn't really played... Um, that much and he hasn't really, you know, we, ex- I, well, I, I don't know what everyone else, I sort of expected a little bit more, but then he'll turn around and say, I didn't play enough games. So, which is fair enough, but I sort of expected, uh, I did say after two or three weeks ago that the strikers sort of, we needed more out of the strikers this season. And obviously he's one of them, but as a big fan favourite, that's a tough one for the fans. But I think, you know, in general, I think, I think sort of, if you want to progress and move on, and uh, the noise coming out of the club is a young, a younger team uh, uh, with a younger man- manager coming in. I think um, you know they can't, they can't go down the route and keep uh, these older players. So unfortunately, they, they they're going to move on, and hopefully they they get another uh, club and do well for themselves. And and maybe hopefully we'll nick this time next year. We'll say we sh- we could be saying, well, we should have kept them if they uh, they prove uh, the, the club wrong. Mm, yeah, I wasn't that surprised by the Austin thing once it came out, though. Obviously, he had this clause in his contract that he had to make a certain amount of appearances. I think the sort of writing was on the wall then that he wasn't going to get... Yeah, yeah, year, so but... I forgot to say that. I mean, he, he was supposed to make a certain amount of an appearance. Yeah. And he didn't make them. So it wasn't, it wasn't a particularly a shock when it was actually announced uh, last week. So, like you said, the writing was on the wall, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's fair to say that he's not performed as, you know you'd expect you would have expected more from him this year but I also just think like the team just wasn't designed to his strengths I think it was kind of touching it before I think you said Ian obviously Warburton kind of had in mind that, he, you know, that wouldn't have been a typical player that he would have worked with Charlie Austin that he would have gone for um, and you know I think the, like, the Sheffield United game is kind of like when the, crop, when the cross goes in he makes a great run and heads it into the far corner you're kind of thinking like if they missed a bit of a trick here do you know what I mean could he have had a few more goals if they would have just played a bit more direct but you know, we'll never know. I mean, what are your thoughts, Ian, on those guys released? Any sort of disappointments there for you? Um, not not really. I think they're all been good servants to QPR, all the players that were, were let go. Um, I mean, someone like Don Ball, you know, outstanding professional, um, great attitude, good guy, um, and probably deserves, you know, maybe they could have kept him, but he probably thinks, well, I'm 26, I probably can go somewhere and, you know, you know play regularly. You know, he can play midfield, he can play sort of centre-back. He was excellent, actually, at Swansea on on Saturday, uh, albeit really against a team that, you know, if ever you want to play against a team that suit QPRs, the side that QPR put out, sort of strength, if you like, it was Swansea. And um, and you did well. But um, yeah, with Charlie Austin, I mean, it's, it's a season of what could have been in many ways. If, you know, if he'd have that goal against Sunderland in a cup and stood... They get, you know, they play Arsenal next round. That's a, another great sort of sliding doors moment almost. It was a, you know, awful decision by the ref not to allow it. Um, you know, the missed penalty against uh, Stoke, you know, just things like that. And I think 
look at his body language and that. He said, I know he had a, a few sort of personal matters that kind of affected him and stuff like that. Um, he never looked the player that he did when he came back last year when he was sort of full of confidence and, and flying. And it didn't really sort of, as you say, you look at all the goals he scored, ones I can think of Barnsley in the cup, the two against Everton, the one against um, Sheffield United the other night, the one against Luton and the one against West Brom. They're all from crosses into the box mm. and you put a ball in the box, six yard box, you still got that ability and that first step to kind of, you know, put the ball in the back of the net. But, you know, when you got a side that, you know, perhaps has a, a, maybe a lack of width, plays for the middle more than it isn't suited to um, Austin's strengths. Um, and that's for Lee Wallace as well, you know, another outstanding professional. Um, very much a Warburton man. And I think Warburton has probably vindicated in bringing him to the club eventually. I know he had, a, he had a difficult first season, but, you know, he was as important as, you know, Stephanie Hansen and Charlie Austin in that sort of run in the second half of last season. Um, but, yeah, and really, you know, to be playing wing back at a high level at his age with what he's the, like the fastest slow man I've ever seen. He kind of always managed to get there. <laughs> he's just, um, you know, great pro. And I, as I say, I, I hadn't never really spoke to him, but I was at a reserve game waiting to speak to one of the players after. And uh, he played in the reserve game and he's come back from injury and um, tried to speak to him. Politely said, oh, you know, it's not about me. It's about these young lads. And he stood outside the, the dressing room in the tunnel at, Loftus Road and made sure he shook the hand of every young player as they went out, had a word of advice just to, you know, what should we be doing better and pat them on the back, that kind of thing. And, you know, not on social media, you know, very keen, you know, he's learning Spanish and the real thinker of the game about his next step and coaching and stuff like that. He's, I think he almost certainly will go into management of some some sort. And I yeah, think what's a, little, what, that kind of... what's a little bit worrying for QPR is that, you know, Wallace, Ball, Austin, Good pros around the dressing room, they're real leaders. And you take away that from a dressing room, you still got fundamentally what Rangers had last before Austin arrived, quite a quiet team, a young team. So, you know, they're gonna have to get some, if I want a better word, lieutenants in there, maybe sort of senior heads, just to kind of, you know, because you are gonna need that next season. And a new manager's gonna to wanna to bring his own players in, whoever that may be. But you know, in addition to kind of what they give on the field, I think off the field as well, they're you know, they're, they're you know, big. Big losses for the club. Yeah, a strange for Wallace, isn't it? Because when you look back, I think it's fair to say that he wasn't very well liked at one point. You know, performances weren't great when he was playing in that flat back four. And then when he went Warburton and changed it to the three, uh, I was like sort of doubting whether Wallace could do that, to be honest. I thought that, that was kind of his time up. But he looked, that done in wonders, he looked a much better player in the wing back role than he did in the flat back four, which I didn't expect at all. But yeah, I mean, he's been a great player for QPR since he's been there. I mean, in terms of the players um, that might be staying, talks ongoing, the club has said, with Albert Adoma, Johan Barbe, Moses Odebadjo, Charlie Owens, uh, Ollins, Charlie Owens, uh, Olamide Shadipo. Uh, is there anyone there, Kev, you think needs to stay? I mean, we mentioned Barbe, didn't we, already, about our thoughts with him and that we want him to, we think he'd be a good person to keep around. But if it's probably by Adoma, talks ongoing with him, he's obviously not definitely going to stay, but... Did you expect to see him on that list that I just mentioned before, players leaving? Yeah, a little bit. Um, because he's not... Look, they might, the, the wing-back system might be, be over now with the new manager. So mm. it depends who's coming in. So if you're going to play a flat-back four, I would, keep, I would certainly be negotiating with Adoma and seeing if, if the price is... Uh, they can come to an agreement. If you're playing a wing-back system then not really, then he would probably be surplus to requirements because he's not a natural wing back, even though he's done well, but he's an out and out winger, really. Um, I would try and keep Barbe, but that again, that's just another situation. Are you playing a flat back four? Because Barbe in a flat back four is nowhere near the Barbe playing left side in a three. I mean, he was, um, when you play him in left side centre half in a flat back four, he's a, he's a little bit shaky. You play him. You know, left side free because he's good on the ball. He's got a good left foot. That left side centre half in a free when we have the ball becomes sort of like a fullback. So yeah, it's, it's difficult. You, it's it's quite uh, when you're signing when they're going to negotiate and sign in players. Who in mind of, um, are they going to just sign on the board or sorry the people in charge of the football side? Are they going to sign players for the manager? Say there you go. There's the players. Or is a manager can come in and say, I'm going to play this way 
and I want players for these certain positions. Because at the moment, if you're trying to uh, re-sign players or potential signings, let's be fair, pre-season. I know the season's finished, but pre-season is uh, it's only maybe five, six weeks, five weeks away. I mean, at most clubs I'm hearing are going back around the 16th, 17th, whatever of June. So what's that? That's six weeks, five weeks? What are we on yeah, that? Five Tenth weeks. Bank? Tenth yeah. today. Five yeah. weeks of back. So one, they need to get a new manager in, but two, they have to be saying, are, are the club signing players for a certain system and saying to the manager, we want you to play this system because that's why we've signed these players? Or are they going to go, we've, they found the manager already and they haven't told us and they spoke about what system he wants to play and what um, formation and, they're gonna, and then they are re-signing players on, on that basis. So it's, it's all up in the air and it's all, you know, uh, I, mean, I don't know if Ian's heard anything, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? Are they signing players for a manager? Yeah, no, I think that's a really good I don't, I don't think told them that we're playing this system. If you want a player to sign a new contract, his first question is going to be, well, who's the manager? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there must be, they must have someone planned or lined up. They have to because... What's it now? They, they obviously Mark Warburton got found out he wasn't staying what two weeks ago coming up, but the decision must have been made before that. Mm. They have to have someone in mind. Yeah, and the thing is, we all, we all know how football works is that you know the drums were beating for Warburton three four weeks before. You know he did find out he wasn't being kept on. There would have been numerous hundreds of interested parties contacting the club agents putting their clients forward it, it, it's it's still a good it's a good job QPR you know it's in London the talented squad there there's you know it's got a good profile be, you know there'll be a lot of people that want it there's a lot of people coming forward for it um, whether or not you trust the owners to kind of pick the right person is the question really um, I mean are they going to pick a manager because they want to appease the fans or are they going to pick a manager they think is going to be um is going to improve this team. Mm, no, absolutely. And we'll come on to the manager situation a bit. Before we do, I just want to come on, obviously, mention Charlie Austin there. It's since come out that, you know, he's not best pleased with the way it's come about and the way he's been released. I mean, he did an interview, obviously, with Talk Sports straight after it. Right? So he's a bit pissed off with what happened, and especially with the fact that they asked him if he was going to retire, which I can't, <laughs> can't imagine. It's too nice to hear. But, and he'd done, an, uh, obviously, the QPR podcast as well. It was a really interesting discussion they had there where he basically said that, the kind of mind was was made up from them that he wasn't going to stay the the, the board that is and the people that run the club and he was told over a zoom call um i mean do you think kev has he got like a reason to be a bit annoyed like how do these things usually happen and maybe you give a bit of insight into to your experience as well with it uh, sorry to bring that up uh, <laughs> well i when i've left the football club i usually i didn't even, I, I did say this on twitter i didn't get a zoom but it wasn't invented then. Yeah, yeah. I've replied <laughs> saying, I don't think so, they had video technology back then. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> look, I think really, I think I would have been, um, if I was Charlie Austin, I'd, what, what really would have annoyed me is the question of, are you going to retire? Mm. Which I don't think was needed to be said. Because obviously... Yeah, because he, he's not his best, but he's still scoring goals. Like, he's still... The championship, I, yeah. Someone might take a chance on the championship, a more direct team that you put the ball in the box and say, sort of, Charlie, we might need you. You're not going to play every game. You might play the odd game, but we might need you to come on a sub for 20 minutes and we'll put the ball in the box. It's possible a League One team. So to suggest that, to ask him if he's going to retire, well, that, that, that ain't great. <laughs> Regarding um, being told, uh, I, I don't know a good way of being told. I don't think there is a good way of being told. Uh, regarding the Zoom, did everyone else get a Zoom? I don't know. Does anyone know, or is it just Charlie got the Zoom? I'm not sure. They all would, yeah. they? would be the same. I think, could, I think they could have just maybe waited or go and done it face to face. But like I said, there ain't no uh, good way. There ain't no nice way to be told, especially if you want to stay. It's different if you want to leave and your, your contracts up. But if you want to stay and you've got an affinity to the club and you love the club and you really like it, to be say to to, to be done, there ain't no easy way. I mean, I left I left Huddersfield um, for one season. I was actually in Ireland and uh, summer rang. I didn't answer it. My, I don't know where I was, but my brother answered it and I was on holiday and I got the boot. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't want to stay, so it weren't the end of the world. 
But when yeah. I left QPR, I got I got a phone call, and I, yeah, it's obviously very disappointing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who, rang you to, who rang you when you were leaving QPR? Kev? Was it the manager or was it someone in the CEO? I think it was the the geezer in the blue and white bar. <laughs> Asking for 40 quid. No, um, it's the manager. The manager. Yeah. yeah. I suppose the frustration, I mean, you can obviously talk from this as well because you played for QPR, you know, longer than Charlie Austin did. But there's kind of that affinity there between Austin and QPR. It's more than just your kind of ca- casual player that comes in and plays. You know, he's obviously had two spells there and he's played for quite a few years. Is, is he like right to be a bit frustrated about the way it's, you know, I think he, it just seemed from, the, from what he said, he just expected a little bit more. You know, is it yeah, was it right for the club to say our minds made up? You're not staying. Is that? I think he's just football. Uh, I don't know. I just I, I feel that he probably knew the writing was on the wall because he didn't get the games. Mm. So maybe he's just maybe upset about things behind the scenes, and he's sort of having a little dig. I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. But to suggest to ask someone they're going to retire. How old is he? Thirty three. Yeah, 32, 33, I think. Yeah, it's a bit, don't, no need for that. Yeah. Well, yeah. like when you, when it happened to you, were you, I mean, obviously I imagine you're a bit pissed off, but can you kind of sympathise with him then in a way that like... I can, yeah. But, yeah, but I knew the writing was on the wall as well. So it was just a, it was just a, you know, a confirmation and yeah, it's not nice to get the confirmation, especially if you want to stay and you, and you've got an affinity or with the club and, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's not nice. I don't, I, it, and I'm and I'm sure it weren't nice for Don Ball either or mm. or Wallace. So I don't I don't like I keep saying it. I don't think there's a nice way to do it, face to face or on a phone call or on a Zoom. Uh, I mean it's a it's a ruthless business football. I mean he's, he's experienced both sides of it now, Austin, because in his first spell the club were desperate for him to stay and he was desperate to leave. And now the second time round, yeah, you know, and quite rightly he was desperate to leave. You know, you should get a chance to play at the highest level when you score twenty odd goals in the Premier League and you're back in the Championship. Mm. And blame you for that, and you know at the same time it's the boots on the other foot now, isn't it? He's not the player he was, and the club, you know, were trumpeting his arrival as the kind of you know the best moment since sliced bread. It's sort of you know twelve months later, it's kind of see you later, mate. And um, are you retiring? We, if players want honesty, you know where they stand. That's fair enough. But do it, you know, be be a, a bit more classy about that. That's uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, guessing, you know. It's, it's, not, it's not the right thing to say, really, is it? The only loyalty in football, Ian, Dan, is, is the fans. Yeah. To be fair, yeah, it does work both ways. Mm-hmm. Times when players want to stay and the club goes bang, and then there's sometimes the, the club wants, wants a player to stay and he says, no, I'm off. Mm. Fans come every week. They're the only ones, really. Mm. So, but agree, like, say again, there's no need for the, no need for, to ask someone if they're going to retire. I mean, just on the decision, Ian, you know, I mean, he said on the QPR podcast that he did, he was basically saying that, you know, he wanted to stay, like, if the contract was put in front of him, he'd sign it, he'd sign it, he was very keen to, is it? You know, I know he's not had his best season and, you know, with all the problems we've spoke about, but when you've got a player who obviously has a big affinity for QPR, he loves the club and is a bit, you know, disappointed from the club that they've not, you know, maybe kept him on a bit just to have him around or can you kind of understand the decision and the way they've gone about it? Depends on the money that would, be, would have been offered. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. You know, he's probably on a big chunk of change. Strikers and all the money, don't they, Kev? And um, <laughs> um, scoring goals, hardest know. thing to do in football. I don't know. I mean, again, <laughs> it, 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 it all comes down to who's going to be the manager, and if they got someone in mind, does he want to bring a striker in? The money that Austin's earning to go elsewhere. I mean, there's other things they've got. Players whose contracts are. Probably need upgrading. Chris Willock, Dickey, these types of players. Can that money they save from bigger savings be put towards trying to extend their deals? You, you, you know, you, you don't know. You've got to get your ducks in a row, haven't you? And kind of make sure that there is that there's so much sewn up scenarios going on behind the scenes, that, and you've just went on, on fr- through it. Money. How much would he take to stay? Don't know. If they gave him an offer that he might think, no, nah, I'm not. I'm not staying for that. But then you're right. They might think, oh, well, we need to use that money to get a younger striker in. Ag- agree with what you just said, Ian. We need that money to upgrade Dickies or Willocks or chairs contracts, maybe Senny Dieng's. So they might have to use it. Got budget to, to be can't, you know, there's a budget to to play with and just and to be in with. So look, I always I always say this. 
it depends who they get in to replace mm. us. And we'll know in six months' time if it's justified. Because if Austin goes to another club and bangs in the goals and the new replacement don't, we'll be giving it, should have kept Austin. But if it's yeah. the other way around, we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. Because you probably got, I mean, I think Will might have another year and he, maybe an option after that. But you imagine his representatives are probably knocking on the door saying, hang about our, our, our lads had a great season. Let's mm. see the money kind of thing. You don't, you don't know. We don't know that, do we? But, but also knocking on the door of other clubs saying, yeah. look, he's got a year left. Yeah. He's going to be available for a certain amount. He That's might right. have a buyout clause in his contract. I we don't know. You yeah. meet this. We don't know what is happening but in contracts and stuff. So, and then, yeah. you know, as you said, Kev said, the only romance in football is what, you know, the fans... Every Saturday, you know, actually people involved in the game is it's ruthless. You move on, players come, players go, managers come, managers go. Decisions are made, popular ones, unpopular ones, you know, and you know, the wheel keeps turning. But mm. no, I think you're right, Kev. I mean, I think you know, if he's earning a lot of money and they want to reinvest that into player contracts for some of the other squad or they want to reinvest into another younger striker, I completely understand. But at the same time, I think if there is the opportunity there to keep him around on a much reduced wage and you know he wanted to stay that much so he was willing to take a massive pay cut then I probably would have kept him around for a year personally I don't don't but see the not, harm in that it's not a QPR charity club <laughs> you know what I mean yeah, yeah. just go because he loves the club I, oh, can they re-sign me I love the club <laughs> I think he brings you know like we said his off the pitch stuff and ability in the box I still think there was something there to offer it's not just about as you know Love for the club, but anyway, the decision's been made. Right, well, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Let us know what you uh, what you think about what we've spoken about today uh, in the comments below, and leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well. There should be a little logo in the on this video. If you click it, it should be it'll give you the option to subscribe. So if you could do that, that would be great. It really helps us out. And yeah, we'll be back at some point. See what happens. Might not be a lot to talk about in the next few weeks, or well, there might be loads to talk about. We don't know, but we'll weigh it up. Anyway, we'll be back at some point. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching.